Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. You know, we are in the beginning of a new decade and seeing that you guys like the year in review that we did just about a week ago, I figured, you know, let's look back at the kind of most substantial things that have happened to me in the last 10 years or so. You know, I've been breeding snakes for 32 years professionally and about 10 years ago, a pretty significant thing changed kind of my whole life path in a way, had no idea what kind of impact it was gonna have on me. And of course, that was the start of YouTube on a channel called Snake Bites TV. I spent the last 20 years of my life growing to what now is one of the largest collections of snakes in the world. Along with me, my wife Lori, 30,000 plus snakes, and my always colorful crew, there never seems to be a dull moment. This is where my passion meets my obsession. Welcome to my world. Where is it? I just need that back no. wall. Okay, I'm serious. I'm gonna no. do the le just leopard geckos and crested on the back wall. I swear to God, you better stop because you're making me so mad. I'm not I'm not even <laughs> screwing around, Lori. What the hell is going on with this? He comes in, all I heard was blah, 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 blah. Here's 400 snakes. I don't know where the hell to put them. Today, we're going to talk about the anatomy of a snake egg. When you art artificially inseminate your eggs. <laughs> I'm inseminating my eggs, baby. <laughs> And if you want to come take your picture with Dorothy, we're going to feature some of those shots in a future episode. We'll be waiting. <laughs> <laughs> that was horrible. I took my first significant trip out of the country to Australia, which led to a decade of traveling the world. I tell you what. I thought that the first time, it was pretty exciting, I tell you. I don't know how many times you have to do this to stop the adrenaline from going, but that was still quite a trip. Sounds good. First jump mine, next three yours. All right, sounds good. Now that was incredible. I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to do this, but uh, I'm gonna give it a go. Oh, that was awesome. I've traveled all the way to Shizuoka, Japan to come to the biggest reptile show in this region. It's just amazing to me that I come all this way and find animals I didn't even know were in existence, like this beautiful albino fly river. What we have here is an Aldalbran tortoise. Now this guy is almost 100 years old and about three and a half foot long and, and 400 kilograms. It's just amazing to be just hand feeding this guy. And I gotta be careful with my fingers because I know it's got a pretty good crunch. Well, you know, I've been around a handful of cheetahs, but she is She's really stuck. I mean, she is unbelievable. I mean, she just absolutely loves people's attention. Yeah, she which is loves really cool. the attention and a typical cat. So she, uh, she loves it when she wants it. I tell you what, until I started traveling all over the world, I didn't realize the impact it has on who you are as a person. Now, I would rather spend money on travel than any material thing because that experience you're gonna have with you forever. I always tell my son and all the people around me, you know, buying a watch, that watch isn't gonna mean anything to you five years from now, but that trip to Australia or Indonesia or Africa, or wherever you're gonna go, you're gonna remember for the rest of your life. And those experiences have been amazing and I will continue to do them all the time. As a matter of fact, this year we've got tons of travel it's going to be so exciting and along the way i've met some pretty amazing people and i think that the two people that really had the biggest impact on who i met in the last decade was of course jack Hanna and bob Irwin, steve Irwin's dad hi everybody i'm jungle jack Hanna from the columbus zoo welcome to snake bites ryan was here somewhere with me hey uh jack jack jack, jack. i know you've been doing this for a long time and stuff but that's really not the way we roll when we do this show let me, let me just stand back for a second this is, how I, this is how I want you to do it. Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. We're down at the Columbus Zoo, and we're with Jack Hanna, and you're watching Snake Bites. Something like that, you know, and that, you, got, you got that? Yeah, All right, look at see. It. I know you've been doing it, but see what you Hi. can do. Hi, everybody, I'm Jungle Jack Hanna. Welcome to Snake Bites. Gunther Gibbon Williams always said, you can usually train a wild animal, you can never tame a wild animal, right. because it's like a loaded gun, as you well know, it can go off at any time. Right. And this cat here is capable right now of taking your hand off or something like that. But we do work with him with, uh, with enrichment and all this. You can see here these guys, you know, nothing's done here about knocking animals around or anything like that. These animals are, they've got all their claws, teeth and everything. But I could just watch this cat all day long. Before we knew it, it had disappeared under the porch. Without even thinking, I got on my hands and knees and went under the porch after it. 
Before I realized it, I looked in front of me and there was Bob Irwin, right down on his hands and knees too. This certainly was a memory I'll cherish for the rest of my life. I think the most important thing for any young person coming up that, that wants to get into any field actually, you know, it doesn't have to be the animal field, the environmental field, but any field, is they must believe in themselves first. Don't get me wrong, I met so many amazing people and every person I meet inspires me in a different way. Jack was just iconic because I grew up watching him. And of course, Bob Irwin, Steve Irwin's dad. Steve was such an inspiration to me. Still is to this day, there's no doubt about it. And speaking of that, I kind of got the film bug, right? I love filming. I fell in love with filming with snake bites and I always thought that I wanted to make an animal planet type of a network online on YouTube. So I went ahead and launched my initiative called Animal Bites TV. Watching soon. The first independent animal network produced for animal lovers by animal lovers. This is the weirdest primate on the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the eye eye. My name is Jason Miller and you're watching Five Weird Animal Facts. So what we're trying to do is show people that there's a lot more to elephants than just watching them in Kruger or on National Geographic. Australia is home to around 90 species of bat, with the majority of these being micro bats. Yeah, they're hemotoxic. Ooh, did you see that? My name is Alex Jones. Look at this. I've traveled all over the world searching for adventure and dangerous wildlife. Animal Bites TV really didn't work out the way that I planned. I still think it was a great idea for the time. It just maybe didn't have the right execution. And I learned a lot from the experience. I had a lot of fun. My hosts that were on the network were absolutely amazing. And I'll be honest with you, what we learned there, I think might pave the way for the next decade to come as well, when we hopefully are gonna relaunch Animal Bites TV this year. But we're gonna do it on a much different level. Instead of doing it indie style, we're gonna do it much more grand. I mean, almost like mini TV show shot like you would watch Animal Planet. So hopefully that's going to happen in the decade of 2020 and actually later on this year with any hope. But you know, I started as a snake breeder, right? So snake breeding really was still my foundation. I mean, that's what I love and I will always love. I'll always be a snake breeder, even though some of my kind of direction in life has changed over the last several years. And there were a couple pretty significant things that happened over the last decade in snake breeding. One, of course, was producing the Sunset Ball Python. That was a pretty major thing for me and the other was importing a ball python like this that had a little scaleless head that ultimately turned into the scaleless ball python this one's now shed of course it's the sunset ball and this was probably the biggest animal that i produced this year but today i'm unveiling the scaleless ball python after we cut the first egg i was just freaking out i mean there was i can't even describe what i was feeling Certainly, all that doubt I had about not producing a scaleless animal was starting to come true when we missed on the first snake. I gotta be honest, when Brian cut that second egg and there was a scaleless animal in there, I mean, I, I almost can't describe what I felt. I know I was yelling really loud. I, I kinda don't even remember, I just kinda like blacked out a little bit. Take a look at that beauty, just an amazing animal. And again, I'll always love snake breeding. I can't imagine a time when I'm not going to be breeding snakes because it's just something I love so much, even though my direction is more towards education and even entertainment for that matter. And the fact is, is that I always wanted to have a TV show, one of those old school TV shows where you go out in the wild and, and catch animals and talk about them, you know, that blue chip, Steve Irwin-ish type of thing. And, uh, you know, that just wasn't happening so I decided to do this on my own and through some crowdfunding you guys helped me actually produce Brian in the Wild where we traveled to Africa and we actually did an old-school kind of animal documentary had an absolute blast doing it
strangely enough, in the process of actually shooting Brian the Wild in Africa, Discovery Channel reached out to me and they said, hey, we've got this show called Venom Hunters that we would love you to be a part of. Would you like to do it? And, uh, you know, again, it was kind of a dream of mine to always be on Animal Planet, Discovery Channel, History Channel, whatever the case is. So I took it. I had an absolutely amazing time. It only lasted one season, but we had some great adventures. Unfortunately, can't really share much in the way of clips with you guys because they copyright my videos every time I try to show them to you. But anyways, it was me kind of running around Australia catching the most deadly snakes on the planet. What better fun could that be? And if you guys want to check out Venom Hunters, uh, right here you can go ahead, click on this on Discovery Channel, and you can watch those episodes of me catching deadly snakes. And that time with Discovery Channel filming Venom Hunters was really one of the most amazing things. I'm so happy I did it. Will I do another TV show? I'm not 100% sure, to be totally honest with you. But one of the things I was thinking is that the majority of you guys that have been watching the vlog really have only seen here at BHB or at the Reptarium. And the fact is, is that my journey on YouTube and all this actually started at this building right here. For 12 years, I actually resided at this building. It's a 15,000 square foot building, only about four miles away from where BHB and the Reptarium is now. At one point, we had close to 30,000 snakes in this building and had almost 17 employees at our peak. It was beautiful to be here, but I was definitely ready for a change. For whatever reason, I just felt that my passion had been shifted, right? I love breeding snakes, and I'll always love it, but I didn't want that to be the only thing in my life. I wanted to educate. I wanted to give people an experience like they're gonna have at the Reptarium for the next 20 or 30 years, and that is really the direction I decided to go. And weirdly enough, part of the educational side turned in to a daily vlog. That's right, a lot of my YouTube friends that I was working with always told me, Brian, you have so much content, you should daily vlog, people would like it. I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't know how I was gonna even do it, but I thought, let's go ahead and give it a shot. And I gotta tell you guys, starting to daily vlog about three and a half years ago, truly was one of the most life-changing things that has ever happened to me. Welcome to the vlog, 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 Vlog. There are two, there are two. Oh, and that's it. Oh, 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 And I tell you what, with your guys supporting the vlog like you did, it blew me away, guys. And it gave me the ability to do some things that I really wanted to do. Actually launch Reptile Prime, my own product line. That's right. Well, it turns out that the product line was just coconut bedding. I really probably haven't executed Reptile Prime to the fullest of my ability. But with that said, in 2020, I plan on really wowing you guys with some new products. I am standing in this absolutely huge new construction building, and this is one of the things that we are using for my new project. So this whole space here is part of the new company. Reptile Prime, that's right. Our new company's name and logo, by the way, is Reptile Prime. Take a look at this, look at this. These are all bags of Reptile Prime coconut bedding. And there is nothing that has been more impactful on my life in the last decade than opening up the Reptarium. I mean, it has literally changed my life on so many different levels, from keeping animals, to education, to just even enjoying my life. I love every minute at the Reptarium, and I cannot thank you guys for coming along on the journey. For those of you that have visited, I appreciate it. For those of you that will visit, I appreciate that. So what do you say we get in and start building? And we're gonna be cutting the very first pieces that will kind of be the very first cornerstone of the Reptile Zoo next door, the Reptarium. So I came over to see what Stuart was up to and guess what's going on. Look at what he did to my cage. And guess what? Less than two hours until the cages for the Reptarium show up. That's right, today is the day, it's the install. We've been waiting this forever. Take a look at this. How freaking awesome is that? Oh my gosh. And of course, this is where the tortoises are going to go. So it's official. We are unlocking the door and letting people in. 
Hey guys, what's going on? How are you, man? How's it going? Hi, how are you guys? Thank you guys for waiting. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's up? Good to see you guys. Good to meet you. Hey, thanks for waiting so long. Hey, And to wrap up this decade, we actually started the addition to the Reptarium. So the next decade is gonna start with the expansion of the Reptarium. I mean, it has been an amazing decade that we just passed, but I'm here to tell you that this next decade is gonna be ridiculous. 10 years really does seem like a long time, but it's pretty amazing how quickly it went by. And I couldn't have imagined at the beginning of last decade that we would be where we are today. And I couldn't be more excited about what this decade has to offer, and I can't wait to bring you guys along on the entire journey. If you enjoyed this video, here's actually a 2019 year in review. Here's an entire 2019 playlist you can roll through. Over here, please hit that subscribe button. Turn those post notifications on. Have a wonderful day. Remember to be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.